Hey guys, welcome back to Mini Watch Kurt here, and this is the Seiko Pro Specs SBDC053 automatic mechanical diver's watch, and it is an ISO certified diver's watch to 200 meters. Now, um, this is Aaron's watch, Aaron over at the Aaron Dunlap uh, OFD watch channel. Did I say that correctly? Aaron Dunlap OFD watch channel. Yeah, he was gracious enough to send me his expensive ass watch through the mail and let me check it out for my reviewing pleasure calls. And I sent him my Black Monster, which I've already received back. I'm very lazy, but I've actually been pretty busy uh, with stuff going on in my life. But finally getting to this video. And there's a lot of videos out there on this watch. So there, there's nothing really new to be said about this. Everybody's discussed the, the parameters and features of this watch to no, to no means, to no means, to no end. And I'm just going to briefly discuss it. And then later I'm going to talk about what's up with this watch and why I really like it or maybe I don't like it you never know um but before that no not before that let's just get right into it again this is a legitimate diver's watch let me just zoom in zoom in here real quick here there you go and there, there you go mm -mm. it is beautiful I am a little bit uh OCD and a little bit I have a little bit ADHD because I just straight up stop talking about all the features and stuff to just look at the shiny McShiny. Look at the shiny McShiny of this watch. It is beautiful. Aaron, I am jelly. I'm a jelly sandwich. I'm a jelly donut, peanut butter, and jealous of this beautiful, beautiful watch. Or am I? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I had to bust up my patty mask, of course. Anyway, legitimate diver's watch, ISO, ISO certified, ISO compliant. And I uh, means it has to have a minimum of a 100 meter tested water resistance, unidirectional bezel with a minimum of five minutes elapsed minute markings, and an obvious uh, set point for the marker. The indices must be very clearly seen and retains visibility from a minimum of 25 centimeters. The watch must be able to show the user that it's running in darkness, which is what the loom on the second hand is for. It must have a magnetic resistance of at least 4,800 amperes per minute and keep its rated accuracy. It must have a minimum shock resistance and still function after said shocks. It has to resist rust and the strap or band must have an attachment point, uh, attachment points, which which uh, should be able to withstand 45 foot, uh, uh, 45 pound feet of pulling pressure. Pulling pressure. The bezel is a 120 quick, <laughs> quick, 120 click unidirectional bezel. The clicks are really soft and and it has a real, it has a nice clickety click to it. It's not super taut, but it does have a pushback resistance. It is a little bit nutty, but not too nutty. Some some bezels are real nutty in that, like a clickety click, like when you put two nuts together, uh, the kind that you buy in the stores. And then you, yeah. So I like this bezel. It's 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 nutty ratchety, nutty ratchet. I spend far too much time thinking about the sounds of the bezel, the bezel and the case and the. Well, let's not talk about the bracelet. The bezel and the case are all 316L stainless steel. The case, uh, I'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, these in these uh, these markers on the bezel are not loom. They are they are appear to be applied onto this beautiful blue. Can you see the blue bezel? That is a beautiful blue bezel, and I really like that. Basil. The dial is, of course, that beautiful, stunning, deep blue, and you got the pretty standard uh, hour and minute and seconds hand, which are pre pretty much the same in all these 62 MAS uh, reissues. They're just different colors on them. Excellently done watch the crown is a screwed on crown of course it is not signed which actually makes it better in my opinion signed crowns if they get all, all busted up it's not really easy to to make them look nice again this one you can just get it give it a quick buff like this one's got some scratches on it already Aaron um, you can probably just polish that up a little bit the lug the lugs are drilled for your pleasure and it makes it very easy to change the strap-ons. The case does have Seiko's uh, Dia Shield coating, 
Now, the Dire Shield coding is Seiko's, uh, what you call it, Seiko's trademark for their physical vapor deposition or PVD process to apply their diamond-like protective layer, diamond-like coating. So it is a DLC coating. It is a PVD DLC coating. A lot of people get confused about PVD and DLC. They think they are two different coatings. They're not. Uh, PVD is the actual process of putting on these coatings and not a coating itself. Uh, DLC coating is a PVD coating. It is a physical vapor deposition. There's a lot of different kinds of coatings that you, that are used for watches like um, uh, silicon oxide, uh, titanium nitride, zirconium nitride, it's kind of like the goldy ones, titanium carbon nitride, and most likely what is used on this black monster, my black monster is a... Uh, titanium aluminum nitride so this is not a dlc coating a lot of people like to say or think that this is a dlc coating it is not it is most likely titanium aluminum nitride otherwise seiko would say that it has their dia shield coating this is said to have the super hard coating which it is probably not because i've barely even used it and there are already a bunch of scratches which i have I haven't even sized it or anything. Anyway, anyway, let's get back to this watch. We talked about the bezel. We talked about uh, the handset. It's beautiful blue. It's got Seiko's uh, Super uh, Lumen Bright. Lumen Bright. Is it Super Bright? Is it Super Lumen Bright? It's Lumen Bright. It's Bright something. It's Lumen Bright. It is what it is. Uh, simple date function being covered up by the hour hand. Just gloriously, magically timed for that to happen. There is no bubble on the on the glass. The crystal on the top of the glass is a sapphire crystal, and I do believe it has an AR coating. Yep, there is an AR coating on the crystal, AR coated sapphire glass crystal for your crystal goodness. And uh, it, the sapphire is slightly, slightly domed, which makes it just look fantastic. The dome is not so much that it acquires every single reflection in the entire universe you won't see a black hole emanating on this crystal anytime soon and look at that look at that fingerprint mm. okay what are we going to talk about next mm, we did the case we did the bezel we did the crystal we did a hair we did a thing of a hair the, this bracelet is not what comes with this watch this is an aftermarket bracelet it is a uh strap code bracelet I, I believe it's not perfect i don't think that it's it, it it the bracelet itself is a nice piece for sure but it just to me it just doesn't terminate it just doesn't terminate like really nicely here it's nice but it's not perfect it could be it could be a lot better here is the back of this beautiful seiko typical Seiko backs got that got that great wave. It says Air Divers. It says Seiko got a bunch of numbers and stuff. Just got a bunch of identification numbers and stuff. Would you just look at the numbers and stuff? Here is the strap that comes with this watch. It is a very robust rubber strap. Big old buckle. Big old Seiko keeper. Uh, metal lined holes for the for the strap which gives it that robustness and uh looks like it's very comfortable i don't think it was even used i don't think aaron even used this strap aaron you didn't use your strap on you didn't use your floppy strap on for your watch or did you i don't know i don't pay attention to most people's videos but <laughs> just kidding aaron i i do watch your videos and they're great they're just great they're great so next but not least uh, inside the case res resides Seiko's robust 6R15 automatic mechanical movement. It employs 23 joules, speeds to 21,600 BPM, has a power reserve of at least 50 hours. <clears throat> its rated accuracy is minus 15 to plus 25 seconds per day. That means that anything within that range is acceptable for this movement. It'll have something in between. Typical, typically of the 6R15s, I get about maybe about plus three to plus five seconds per day, but they can vary depending on all sorts of situations in your life. Uh, what else are we talking about? Uh, we got the strap, we got the case. Okay, well, let's check 
Oh, well, I don't really need to check the measurements because I don't. I didn't want to put the caliper on this watch, but I'm just going to go by with what I did on the patty moss because it is exactly the same case in every every possible way, and that I can see. So the case I got, it's about 42 and a half uh, in diameter, 40 and half, 42 and a half millimeters in diameter. Lug to lug is about 49 and a half millimeters. Lug width is 20 millimeters, which I really like. The thickness is about 13.8 millimeters. And let's put it on the wrist. Check it on the wrist. Why is why does this watch fit me, Aaron? Why is it like why did I get bigger? Wait, wait, let me check. Nope. Uh, damn it. But uh this actually fits. What the hell? Why is this watch fitting me now? Did I just gain like all the weight today? I didn't even adjust the the micro adjustments and it's fitting me. It looks bigger on my wrist than it does yours though. Maybe I just got the the, 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 the top girth, you know, the top girth. Anyway, that is on my wrist. Let me zoom out dot com. Really nice. The, the bracelet does make it a little bit more oomphy on my wrist if, with, with, with a strap. It probably looks a little bit smaller, but really sweet. Love this watch. Side profile there. Kind of a downward perspective profile right there. There you go. Mm -mm -mm. So the one thing I forgot to mention, the, the bezel is very easy to grab and to spin you McSpinny. I think you, you can grip it and turn it. You can grip it and turn it. Some of the other watches that I've had uh, not very easy to grip and turn. You do have to use a little bit of force, but like, like for example, the Orient Kamasu, you gotta, oh my God, you just gotta get in there. You gotta get in there and you gotta give it. Mm, you gotta give it. Come on, baby, you can do it. Oh, it is just tight, tight, tight. Back in middle school. So that's that. And let's check the loom. Check the loom. Check the loom, make it glow. Check the loom, use a light, make it glow. Check the loom, check the loom. All right, guys, we are going to uh, test this. Here is the new, you know what? I'm going to put it in the middle here because just, just for betterness, just for betterness. We're going to test out Aaron's uh, 62 MAS reissue, the SBDC053 against the new black monster with the blue loom against the Orient Lake Havasu, whatever it is, Lake uh, uh, Kamasu. God bless you. The Kamasu and my Steinhardt OVM 39. Uh, oh, not OVM 39, my, my uh, Ocean 139. I know already that the Ocean 139 is going to lose super badly. Um, I think that the SBDC 053 will probably be the winner because it's just probably better. So ISO is all the way up to 55 billion. 55 billion? 55 billion. If that were even possible, we're gonna turn off the lights and lock the door, and then go to get one of two lights. Look at that. I got two flashlights going on here. Use a spin, cover your face with the flashlights of justice here, and give it a couple more times. Sorry for the for the bumping into the camera. And go there you go, boom. There is the loom check for the boys, and right away. The SBDC 053 is the clear, clear winner. Look at that. That is, that is the clear winner. The, the monster on the left, pretty good. The Kamasu on the right of the, the uh, 62 MAS is, eh, it's okay, but it's just clearly being absolutely spanked by the 053. The 053 is the clear, clear winner. The Ocean 139 is is holding its own against the the monster even though it has a lot less uh uh surface area it is doing still pretty good it is doing still pretty good now mind you the initial brightnesses of loom uh that's most mostly for the wow factor i i know that all of these watches will be glowing after a bunch of hours in the complete darkness it just that's just how it is 
and they'll all probably be more or less the same brightness after a couple hours but look at that that thing is still that thing is still on fire it's baking my friggin retinas right now that is that is absolutely astounding that is absolutely astounding that's some good loom guys that's some good loom nice so anyway let's uh let's get back to the hotel i'm gonna turn on one two three four five lights and then go back down to iso freaking 500. anyway what i want to think to talk about next and uh, my, i'm sorry guys my brain is all over the place this week it's just been a hell of a week i'm gonna i'll write it down in the you know in my usual section with, with the story time i'll let you guys know what's going on things are happening and some of it is some of it is terrible some of it is pretty cool but yeah this watch i i didn't think i would like it you know i see it in i see it in videos i see it in pictures and i didn't think i would actually like it i i have this dial on my um on my Invicta mod, if you know what, if you know what that is, uh, check out my Invicta mod, the uh, the Vision mod. This is the same dial I think that I have on that, and it, it just looks way better, way better on this. In this case, I think because of the crystal and everything, it just looks way better. It's beautiful, and I think that when I put this watch on, I do feel like it is a higher quality than say like one of these. It's just this is this is like a honda civic right here okay nothing wrong with the honda civic i have one and this is more like you know more like an audi or something no you can't go german you gotta go japanese this is more like uh a sporty acura <laughs> okay so if you guys get it if you want this watch get it don't waste your time life is so short to worry about the little things in life you know just go for it live your best days you know so anyway let's see what the boys have to say this is a super long review hey guys what up what up what's going on well we're gonna do it yep okay uh, so yeah i'm really eager this time i don't know why i had like five coffees I'm, I'm blowing stuff out of my butt anyway uh yeah it's it's really good it's pretty it's a little expensive at around six hundred dollars, but you know, like you said, life is short. You just just let Kurt. <laughs> yeah, he's got these little legs. It's hilarious. Yeah, when he when he when he runs, it's like he's going real fast, but he's not, like his Honda Civic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, whatever, guys. Oh my God. Yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't know what to say about that. But um. <sighs> what? <sighs> Ted. Why are you intentionally sighing like you want attention or something? What's the matter? Oh, well, you know, I was watching uh, that uh, the documentaries on that one that channel about uh, uh, a B BBW, BBW, BBW. <laughs> That's my kind of channel. I love, I love, I love BBW. I love the documentaries on BBW channel. I got like I always have like five, six, seven tabs open. Uh, th on the, that's how I roll. That's how I roll. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't think you, I don't think you're talking about the same thing. I'm talking about documentaries about like planet Earth and like ancient history and stuff. And like, you know, BBC, BBC is the channel that I'm talking about. Anyway, I was, I was thinking about like, I was thinking about like where I come from and stuff. And I don't remember where I came from. I know the general area, but I'm, I'm just kind of sad. I want to go see it one more time before, before it's time for me to go. What do you mean it's time for you to go? I'm a million and a half billion years old. You're a million and a half billion years old. That's a long time to be alive. I know, and I'm getting real old. I'm getting real small. And eventually, I'm just going to disappear. That's that's the kind of person I am. Yeah, you are, you are a super small dinosaur. Anyway, yeah, maybe we should do something about that, Kurt. How about we go and find Ted's uh, ancestral home and find the Walmart that he used to shop at? That yeah, that thing burned in the media file. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, guys, maybe that's something we should do. Um, yeah, to the audience, I'm glad you could come here and watch Minute BBW. And may your peanut be happy. Thanks for watching. Yeah. <laughs>